Okay, okay, sorry. Hi guys, and welcome to another Ginkgo tutorial. Uh, my name is Zero, and I'll be your instructor for today. This is our first video we made since our summer hiatus. As you can hear, there's no fan keeping me from melting anymore. The summer heat has finally broken, and the cold winter air is making it breathable and livable in here. So no more loud buzzing in here. You just hear the high-pitched scream of my computer blowing up in the background now. So, uh, small miracles. So, um, because it's a lot cooler, we'll begin making a whole lot more videos after this. So it's kind of like a Steven bomb, but a zero bomb of tutorials that will come after this one is posted. So I decided to let's just dive right in and start making some more tutorials now that you know I can survive without the use of a high-velocity fan. So, what are we going to be learning today? What we're going to be teaching you guys today is how to make a uh, action figure out of your Second Life avatar. Now, I'm sure you noticed that when I've filmed in this perspective before, I usually have a bunch of crap on my desk. And one of my prized possessions is this action figure I made of my friend Ryoko Takeda. She's like one of my favorite wrestlers. Um, well, Second Life wrestlers. So, it was really fun to make an action figure of her. Um, it gained some attention and a lot of people will ask me how to make it and I never really got around to showing how to do it because I didn't quite have a few techniques and there were some restrictions but while we were in our downtime we found some um, solutions to those problems and that's what I plan on showing you today. So although this action figure is pretty small and it has all the clothes she was wearing at the time and her hair as it was, it's only a mere 10 land impact but I think it might be a little bit less I think because um, it doesn't have the stand so it's about five land impact for some reason so I'll be showing you how to make a low land impact um, action figure of your friends or family members or your favorite wrestler <laughs> so you can display them in your house actually let me show you something else real quick these if you zoom around my house you see I have made a quite a few of these of my favorite wrestlers um, and they're all under 10 land impact because I think Lyra the computer killer is um, the heaviest she's 10 land impact while Ryoko might be 8 I know Ray is 7 and Maxine hmm I'm not sure but I'm pretty sure she's low all of these are under 10 land impact so you can see that you can get a wide range range what is the words, a wide range of characters and stuff and they all um, are small enough to fit on your shelf so enough of me showing off whoop wall <laughs> all right so enough of me showing off and it's time to dive in and actually begin this tutorial what you'll need for this is a dark storm viewer, a model, obviously, unless you know you're doing it yourself, an animation pose that you want your action figure to take in, a blender, a Avastar. I've used a 1.1 and it gave me good results. I think I made this one back in my 1.1 days, but I've been using a 1.71 as of late because it has a more accurate. Uh, animation guessers and I don't have to put them all in manually but if you have 1.1 it's fine either way uh, Avastar of some kind a Sparkles Pro because light doesn't have that texture feature we're going to be using and um, you're going to need mesh the what is that thing called you're going to need to be able to upload mesh because of course they are little mesh action figures um, so if you're looking around trying to find your materials and about to shut this off like god dang it uh, zero <laughs> another Avastar tutorial don't worry everything that I use inside this tutorial will be inside of um, the description so make sure you download my material pack and you can follow along as we go so the first thing I'm going to do is to switch over to the dark storm viewer and we're going to start playing with our model so I'm going to pause real quick and I'll be right back with you Okie doke. So we are back here and we have Dark Storm all loaded up as well as our extra viewer for who act as a model. So what we're going to do here in Dark Storm is. Hmm, what are we going to do in Dark Storm? Okay, so let me start over. Sorry. Okay, so here we have our model who will be 
will be turning into the action figure. Sorry, it's been a while. I'm a little rusty. <laughs> Give me a second. Okay, so now we have our model who will be turning into the action figure. For the sake of the tutorial, we got her in pretty plain clothes. Um, something really easy that won't give us too much hassle when we're trying to get back into uh, when we go to rig. The first thing you'll need to have your model do is give you their shape because we're going to export their shape and put it into um, Avastar. We already made a tutorial showing you how to do this so you can just show your client or whatever that video and have them export the vi their shape but if for some reason they're having a hard time doing it with well your dark storm loaded you can actually export it yourself so let's show you how to do that we're going to just click on our model and you know dark storm xml export and we're just going to click on this right here where it has the username and then shape and then we're just going to push ds export and then it's going to save wherever um, as you can see i was working on some kimono stuff so i'm just going to go back to my desktop real quick desktop and we are going to save this new folder and so many new folders action figure tutorial and then we're just going to save the shape right there but I'm not sure if you can use, um, what's it called? I'm not sure if you can actually use that kind of XML export shape for Blender. So it's easier to just go uh, XML export, click on the shape, and then say make copy. And then in your inventory, it will just have the shape, wear the shape, and then export it the way we showed you in the other video. So that's one way of getting somebody's shape and doing it that way. Um, I got it. I remember how I was supposed to go with this video. I messed up. You see, I'm going to start off by showing you how to make an avatar um, action figure with the easy one. And then we're going to go hard. Uh, what I meant by easy is... Um, we're going to start with a default second life avatar and then we're going to move on to show you how to make one if your client has a mesh body so we're going to start this tutorial off with the easy one and that's our sl body and i just showed you how to export the shape so we have the shape on hand um now we have the shape we have to get our model on the post stand and have them pose in a T pose so we can take reference pictures. So I'm gonna switch over here to zero and have her jump up on the post stand. Whoops. <laughs> also make sure that your client turns off their AO and then you're gonna pose in the T pose and you're gonna take as many pictures as you can from all angles. This helps you um, shape the body a little bit better when you're um, making you, well, you'll see it just helps out better to have a lot of reference pictures rather than none so you would take a picture here in the front you would go on on the side make sure inside on the back like so um please ignore the wedge we'll fix that in blender <laughs> and this other side here so you'll have a full picture it's better to take um too many pictures than not have enough pictures because uh, I know how zero looks I don't think I need to take any pictures of her right now but um, yeah, it's fine so you have your character and you have the pictures now it's time to start um, exporting the parts so we're going to just scoop the screen over here so we don't really need it and we're going to zoom in on our model and we're going to just start extracting her parts so right click on them and go edit and then you're going to hold down shift and select the parts that make up the avatar and sometimes hair hair is a tricky thing sometimes you need to res it on the ground and if to export it because sometimes um, if they wear it will come out in parts I showed you that before in the, the other 
tutorial. So we're going to grab as many parts as we can and when we have everything selected we're just going to go right click dark storm and then no right click save as and clot up and it will give you all the textures and stuff that go with us. So we just hit save as and we're going to go zero parts and work. Now if you export it and you got an empty day you're gonna want to check and see if the where was it be build maybe the select my own select only my objects is unchecked if that's checked then you will get empty days so if you're experiencing an error where your days aren't coming out right make sure that that is unchecked because that can be one of the problems causing it Okay, so we have our parts select, I mean our parts exported, minus the hair. So this will be at this time where you ask your client to res your hair. Zero, if you please, can you res your hair on the ground? And I like how she did that long blink, like, oh, okay. So we're going to go into their worn objects, find the hair, and then res it on the ground. And hopefully it doesn't come out in a bunch of mess. And it's a solid piece, so we can just export it here. So go on the ground, grab it, save as, export, wait for your textures to load so you can see all of them there. And then we're going to hit save as and then name this zero here. And it's going to save everything. All right. So once it's saved, you can pick up your hair and delete it off the ground and we're going to hit move on to the fun part and that's posing it. If for some reason you aren't getting all your parts you can do the meshes method to extract your uh, body I mean not body, the extract your mesh parts and that's going to Darkstorm XML uh, select all the parts that's there download the textures and then export and I will just use this as all of zero <laughs> and then you would run it through the meshes program that we did that how to question mark question mark question mark one so I'm pretty sure everybody still has seen it and has it uninstalled so you just run it through meshes mm, I guess I can do it real quick so let's open up meshes real quick wait for it to load my computer's like oh a break <laughs> Um, oh, I'm sorry, I have the thing open so I can't use it now. But when I um, pretend that you did close Darkstorm and you would just load it up and where is it? Action tutorial and you will see all of zero and it will pull all the stuff here. Obviously it's not going to work because um, I have this open, but you would just push this button, um, hit hold down escape, let it load, and then you would create the files. But it was going to give me this error because I have it open, but uh, let me. Ugh, give me a second. <sighs> okay, it only gave me that error because I had Darkstorm open. But that's one way of getting an all gear mesh parts at once. Alright, so we have our meshes and we have our model and we reference pictures. I guess it wouldn't hurt to take a few of them. So, zero from the front. No need to be artistic here, just pictures. Zero from the front. Turn on the side. Zero on the side. Zero in the back with wedge, save, <laughs> and zero on this side again. Sorry, you want to take reference pictures so you know that everything is in the right place. That's why I said you should take reference pictures. I really am rusty. It's been so long. So I hope I won't have to leave you guys like that again. 
Alright, so we have our reference pictures, we have the parts extracted. Um, now it's time for the fun part, and that's posing our model. So have your model pick uh, what pose she wants. And let me see, I had an animation ready for this. It can be any animation or pose, but I just find that poses are a lot easier because it's just one frame. If you had an animation, it would still work. You would just have to shuffle through the frames and pick out which one you want. Of course, you could use those animation frames to make an animated model, but that's a tutorial for another day. So we have our pose and we're going to play it. And it's very scandalous, quite scandalous indeed. <laughs> As you see, she's down there on the ground. And what you're going to do now that you're client is animated is rip this animation that she's playing so what you do now is right click on your client and you go have anims and then you see which one is playing when it matches up with the one you have down here you're just going to hit open and then save as bvh and then we're just going to name it uh pose because what else will we name it we'd rather have the long string of numbers and you're going to take more reference pictures so we know when we have the avatar in that pose uh, she's posed properly so snapshot here and snapshot here and that's pretty much it so once you have all of that stuff down you're almost ready to go into blender because i almost forgot one very crucial step and that is the skin because if i didn't grab that we would just have an avatar like a statue so you want to grab the texture for our avatar so click on your avatar and go to av textures um you'll see that she'll have ooh, a bunch of textures that are here that are baked so we're just going to copy this to inventory save as lower body ping I'm pretty sure the this doesn't save the alpha as well like blender doesn't care about alphas but to make it easier you can just ask your client to take off their alpha real quick so uh, zero take off that alpha for your hair I start making my life difficult for a second no oh, that broke over there so took that off and we can just save this a little better all right and that's all you'll need for this tutorial for extracting your model now we have to pause for a second and then jump into blender and i can show you what we do from here on out thanks a lot zero you are a big help now get sucking up memory <laughs> all right so I'll see you guys once we go into blender okay so we're here in blender i'm gonna move this up some more and once again i forgot to turn on the screencast so you guys can see what um Oh, one second. I forgot again. Okay, sorry about that. I had to do, a, you know, that factory reset for your blender. And when I did that, I forgot to turn screencast back on. Okay, so now we have our screencast on. And what we're going to do now is import our shape of our model. So let's import zero shape. What we're going to do is go over here to file and then import and then shape as avastar and then we're going to use shape xml and it should give you zero's pretty um <laughs> silly shape all right so here i am in all my boobtastic glory and now we're going to import all those things we had together and this is why i said to go on to the t pose when you were there because it makes it a little bit easier to apply things so i'm going to press shift c and make sure everything is nice and center go to a new layer because you know how i am about those things by now and i'll go file import and then we go day and then we have zero parts and of course it's all down there and twisted because why not <laughs> um so we're gonna make sure everything is here and pull out of the ground we're gonna press 
the shift and activate the first layer. Uh, press R and then I think Z and then just rotate it a little bit. And this is why I said you would take so many reference pictures because this is where you would use to see if the what's those things called where everything lines up at. So luckily I'm aware of this so I know how it fits. <laughs> But you would look at the pictures and make sure everything is lined up properly. So that would be right here on her goofy ears. I tend to find that if you line one thing up right, then everything else just follows. So, alright. There we go. I think my earrings would have been down here a little more. Alright, that looks about good. And now we have our parts assembled. So I'm just going to press A and deselect everything. And I'm going to start doing some cleanup work. Stuff that I should have done in Second Life but I didn't. And I'm going to join some loose parts. So I'm just going to join her boxing gloves together. Um, like that. And I think her earrings are fine. But for the sake of making things easier I'm just going to join those as well. And I'm going to do some artistic work on here. Instead of having this floaty gap here, I'm going to make some alterations and go into scope mode and use the grab. And I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to, no, first, I'm going to select the bra so it knows what to edit. All right, let's select it. And we're just going to grab the strings and pull it down so that it's against the skin and not just hovering here. It's kind of like it's it was not necessary, but it makes things look a little bit better. So I'm gonna pull these down, pull this here. Turn the troublesome thing off. So that it lays against the skin, that's kind of the thing. Now you can use the sculpt mode, but if you don't want to use sculpt, you can actually use the, um, I'm going to press A real quick and control J, turn, oh, no, that broke it, so don't do that. <laughs> Alright, so you can also use uh, the soft editing, so that's actually called proportional editing. We, oh. So I'm just going to click on a vertex and then press G and I'm going to scroll in to change the field of influence it has around it and we just press G and then we can move it a little easier than I would have using sculpt mode. So it all depends on you, um, which one you find easy to use. So we're just going to push and pull the bikini until it goes up against the skin, you know, like a real bikini instead of hovering around there like it doesn't fit because technically it doesn't <laughs> uh, so grab this G. you don't have to grab vertex you can actually do it by face or edge select if you want it's just these vertexes are huge so it's a big target to grab so I put this right here and that looks a lot better, don't you think? Let's clean that up, pull it here as well. And then we're going to do the same thing for the bikini bottom. If there's any clipping, we could just grab the vertex again and then pull it back out. So we're going to do the same thing for the bikini. Because you guys remember there was a bikini bottom. <laughs> you know, keep, like uh, There was wedging here and we don't want wedging. So we just pull it out. And when you're using the soft select proportional edit, you just have fun rolling the mouse inward and outward to change the field of influence. It gives you some really good results. I know they said you can also change this right here, the fall off type, but I always use it to this uh, what I call the inchworm because it looks like a inner worm scooting about. Okay. And that looks pretty good. I don't think I need to. Oh, it was really that puffed out. Alright. And this over here. 
and this over here and there we go so oh I guess I can grab her boxing gloves and pull them up somewhat properly there we go so now we have her parts on and we're gonna put her, bring in her hair hair actually takes some oh, shift C right in the middle hair is actually a pain in the butt it takes some special loving to get it to be low prim because if we were to use this it might be a lot heavier and that's usually the case too when you have um, what are those things called sculpted hair it can be heavy sometimes so you definitely want to take some care when working with that so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select the hair on all its parts and I'm going to press A and then I'm going to press join and technically I have just broken this hair but it's fine it's fine don't worry about it I'm going to show you what we're going to do to fix this hair because right as it stands now if we were to apply textures to it um, only one part of the texture will show up and the rest would be blank and we don't want that to happen so what we're going to do now is go over to this corner and make way to your mouse arrow transforms into a little star you're going to click that and then drag it over and create a brand new window and then we're going to change this window from a 3D viewpoint to a UV editor. Then we're going to press the tab key. And I'm going to press A. And then I'm going to press well, Alt J. And then transform those triangles into quads. But then it looks like I broke it even more. So let's not do that. Leave it as triangles. As tempting as it is to transform into quads. Um, we're going to press the in, go over here into our UV map. UV editor window over here and we're going to press the N key and it's going to bring up this sparkle tools thing and this is why I said you need sparkles pro because this feature isn't in sparkles light so um, let's zoom in and we're just going to click all of these boxes and this is going to fix that problem I had just mentioned about the hair so check all of them I really wish there was a drag click select that would make things so much faster it could be harder we could have to rename all of these by hand or whatever so I'd like to check the selected only box but I'm sure you don't really need to check that I just check it for the sake of it and for copy to whatever so we're gonna wait for this to do its magic and then you're gonna see all the UV maps just unfold out of this little dot and go back to normal so I could yeah I think I'll just pause it and come right back Okay, that didn't take long at all. So once it's finished, you'll see that your all the maps have overlapped on every, overlapped on each other, and they're now unfolded from that little dot. And it may look a little scary, but that's actually the right thing that's supposed to happen. Don't touch it; it's fine. <laughs> so now that we're out of that, we are going to go over here and see how many um, verts and stuff this is that's pretty high for a display I mean it'd be good if you were just putting it back on your head but uh, because it is a display and it doesn't need to be uh, super detailed we're going to actually use the decimate modifier real quick and reduce some of the poly count because look at all the faces that are on there we're going to want to drop that down as low as we can get it so I guess this is up to you right now how um, simple you want this to be. So what I do is just stare at it until it looks like um, hmm, it keeps as, as much of its original shape as you, it, it hmm, I'm sorry. I decimate the models trying to keep it to this close to the original as possible where it doesn't look too jacked up so let's just decimate and I'll show you what I mean so you want to do it slowly and you'll see the face is collapsing that's totally normal don't worry we're already down to half now it's still retaining a lot of the original shape oh, see now it's too blocky and that's not good so we're going to try to increase the faces up a little more so you see what I mean by you want to keep it to the original but stop it before it gets too blocky I think this still holds the original shape pretty well but it 
does look a little bit. So let's increase it a little bit more. That's too much. I think about maybe here. Now this should be pretty good for all of it. And then we're just going to hit apply. You don't have to apply it, but I just do for the sake of it easing up the workspace. So it went from 44 down to 7. So that's pretty good. That's one of the key of keeping it low. <laughs> Alright, so now we have our parts prepared. We're going to put our hair on our model. Let's see. And slap it on. Wow. Oops. I guess it takes a little patience to put it on right. And this is exactly why if you had the reference photos you would be able to see where it goes on. But because this is like really ugly right now, I'm going to go into where's the display display display. There's display shading. And we're just gonna put it in uh Met Cat for a second. Oh it's even ugly in Met Cat. That's quite the achievement. <laughs> Alright, so ignoring that I'm just gonna put it back here and do texture solid nope. Alright, so I think her hair is about there. Alright, now it's all good. We can remove those other parts because those are just inside hair thingies if we wanted to. But I, I think it'll come out fine. I'm a little worried, but I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> Alright, so we have our hair adjusted to where we want it. And just for the record, this is like my least favorite rigging type of hair. Alright, so hair is on. Body parts are set. Everything's in object mode. We are now going to rig it to our model. So click all the parts, then click on the loops, and then we're going to press Control P and automatic weights. Yay! Oh, it didn't work. Oh, duh. Tab A W. Remove doubles. Oh, there were no doubles. There we go. It's always the hair. You always have to remove the doubles with hair. Uh, see, now it worked. Now let's select this. So you can try it. Bikini. Control P. Weights. Grab the boxing gloves. Grab shift. Select the loops. Control P. Automatic weights. Oh, so it was the boxing gloves. So let's see if there's any doubles on this. Uh huh. So you just click on your thing, uh, your mesh, you hit tab, you press A, you press W, and then you remove the weights. The remove, no, no, the weights, remove the doubles. <laughs> and now we try to rig it <clears throat> to the body. So that and P. Okay. And then we do the same thing with this one. And there we go. Hate that error sometimes. So now it's rigged for better or worse. And we're going to select the loops and go into pose mode. And we're gonna press R and see how badly everything moved. <laughs> it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. Don't worry about it. We can try a couple tricks up our sleeve before we can um, start panicking. So I'm going to select the body, well luckily it's still in part, so we're just going to select the lower body, then we'll select the bikini bottom, and go on the weight paint, weight paint, and I'm going to transfer DOS weights. Also while we go over here, we're going to go into Avastar mode, go to the rigging panel that's there, and I'm going to switch it to skin so I can see the bones properly. Now let's try moving it and see how things came out. It's a little glitchy, but 
is not as bad as it was. Ignore the hair, it's fine. I'm gonna move the other stuff. Like I'm just gonna do the same thing with the bikini top. So I'm just select the body, hold down shift, select the bra top, weight paint, and tools, and then transfer the weights there. And you see that moves a little bit better. Now the hair on the other hand, that's a pain all its own. So what we're gonna try to do is, well I never tried transferring the weights from the body to the hair before, so let's try it. Actually no, it, it's totally fine, it doesn't have to be accurate. So what I'm going to do here is grab the hair, grab the weights, and make it all majority on the head. Because I'm not really good at weight and hair yet. Not without a template, and I don't think I have one for that hair, this style of hair. So, uh, whoops, pose mode. So, weight paint, pose. Uh, where is it? 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 You know what? There's another method to this that I've seen work whenever you don't feel like weighting things. Because it's an action figure and you don't really need to wear this hair, you can actually just slap the hair onto the model and then using the soft select pull it and make it work. That's one of another method I did if you don't feel like uh, rigging hair, which I'm not quite in the mood to do right now, but we'll try it for the sake of trying. Uh, feel free to turn the speed thing on at this moment because this is going to take a minute. So, um, what I'm going to do here is, where's Avastar's crap when I need it? Skinning or fitting. Parents, tools, maybe. Wait, right, okay, there we go. I'm going to remove weights from the eyes because there should be no hair weights on the eye. I'm going to remove it from M head. And then in the skull, remove weights. Um, same thing from the neck. And chest is fine. Those are fine. I'm just going to remove weights everywhere. Alright, I think that's everything always the pelvis because you know what I say if ever there's an error always check the pelvis all right so we have this and I'm gonna put the primary weight on the head because you know hair goes on head tools and turn that on to everything and if you want to make sure you grabbed everything you can use the weight gradient and just pull it all the way down and maybe again in that direction just to be safe so now all the weights for this is on the head and i have no idea why the boobs are doing that so let's select that head weight eyes have weight here so let's remove where is that tool again remove weights remove weights Okay. There we go. That shouldn't happen. Alright, so we have it in. So now we get to move on to the fun stuff and that's texture. For the most part, when we had imported in the textures, uh, when we exported the clothes out, the textures stay with them. So unless you want to look at them or rearrange them, you really do not have to um, import them in here again where you need to add the textures to the body but before we do that we have to give each part its own um what's those things called we have to give each part of the body its own material group because by default they only have the same material see material 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 and if we were to import it in second life as is um I think it might just be boob all around the whole uh, body and there's nothing that we can do to change that. So we have to prep it up here in Blender. So what we do is press tab, press A, and you can see it's over here. And we're just going to 
add a new material here. I'm going to name this material chest and hit assign. And we can add the texture to that so we have it when we export it. It makes it a lot easier. So I'm just going to switch over to tab, this little view here and I'm going to select my chest. And if we press texture solid, you can actually see it going on. I'm going to do the same thing with the pelvis. So we just press tab, then A, and then create a new material. Push new, and we're going to name this right here, the lower body. A, and we're going to select the lower body texture. And then we're going to go up to the head. Press tab, press A, and then, um, well, we can actually leave, now we'll just create a new one. So, new material, new, and we'll name this one head, and then we'll hit assign, and we're just going to open up that texture for my face, uh, face, and hit assign all that jazz and now we need our eyes which can actually stay on the material texture itself I'm gonna select the skeleton and then just go back into object mode and then put it on another layer so we can get it out of here and we can do the same thing here with the eyes just add this and we're gonna name this material eye and let it stay assigned and I don't think I grabbed my eyes I didn't I didn't grab my eyes oh well, that's upset. Make sure you grab your character's eyes. Let me see. Did I? Nope. No eyes. Okay, so I have no eyes. But I can add those in later when I upload it into Second Life. So here's my body. And we have my, the garden and stuff that's supposed to be here. The textures won't show, but, you know, they're totally there. Um, and I think so that this time you could take your time to start editing it if you want to. Like, uh, you know how Second Life's default body has those uh, corners, the sharp edges on your ankles? Well, you can go into sculpt mode and go to smooth. And we're going to turn the power down a little bit and the radius down. And I'm going to smooth out my swollen ankles and make them look a little better um, you can actually turn on the symmetry lock over here and you can do two feet at one time so it makes it look a little bit better <laughs> or you can attach feet which I should have done um, I try to smooth myself out a little more it makes it look a little bit better Or you can, you know, turn on inflate and give yourself more hips or whatever you like. But I think just smoothing out the angles is enough for me. Everything else is fine. So now that we have our texture assigned, um, we can go into the fun part and that's importing our pose. So what we do now is just going to close this window over here because we don't really need it. Let's pick something else. So, uh, whatever. We can close this a bit because we don't need it. And then we're going to import our animation. So what we're going to do is go to a new layer because you know how I am about my layers. Oops. And we're going to press Shift C and center everything back again. And then we're going to go to File, Import, uh, Motion Capture BVH, and we're going to select the pose. Don't worry about the size. It's totally fine. Well deal with that later you can actually see there's the animation now we're going to transfer this animation to our avatar skeleton and that's one of the things I actually love avatar about so um, what we do now is go over here to the side of the avatar no, no 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 not there we go to the animation tab that's on the side and you're going to press this match scales button and it will shrink it down to your avatar so no more trying to remember what scale it is just press the button <laughs> and then you're going to click this right here it says here's the source and we're going to pick pose what target it is because I only have the avatar um, avatar skeleton mode it's going to by default choose the avatar and you're going to press this little uh, plus size right here because the monkey head and then plus so press that button and it's going to show 
it's going to ask you what do you want to transfer to the Avastar skeleton. Um, in most cases, you can just press the guess mapping and it will automatically guess the mapping here if it was a second life, uh, second life animation. They fixed that because before whenever you press that guess mapping thing, it never worked. So if you press the guest mapping button and it didn't work, uh, pause here for a second, I'll, I'll give you a minute, and you can just type in um, what it, you, you just fill the side in. So it should be skull, left blank, or you could just press head. So head, head, neck, neck, co left collar, left is L collar, shoulder left is L shoulder, elbow left is L forearm, wrist left is L hand. Now if you don't want to type all that in for the R you can just press this button down here for mirror copy and it will just copy whatever you pressed here and then just put an R in front of it and then you'll have that. So for chest is chest, for torso is admin, for cog is hip, for pelvis invisible or pelvis invis inv is hip as well. Then left hip is uh, left thigh knee left is left shin, ankle left is left foot, hip right is right thigh, knee right is right shin, and ankle right is foot. Now for foot left and toe left you could just put foot foot as well, uh, but you can also leave those blank. So that's what you put in there in case um, the guest mapping didn't work. And then once that's all filled out you just scroll down and you press the transfer motion button but no I'll just show you what happened if you press it right away that way you know what happens if you encounter the error so right now Avastar is working its magic and transferring it there when we go to look at our model that happened <laughs> and if we look at our avatar you can further see what the error is that happened Okay, so what caused this to happen is the Avastar joint lock is still enabled. And also, it was in skin mode when it should have been in pose mode. So we're going to press Control Z and go back before the transfer animation to guess Samantha when the skeleton is still upright. <laughs> and we are going to go over to the side and we are going to make some adjustments, people. So go back to your first layer and enable the layer with your body and your uh, bones. So I think it's selecting the bones and you press the N key and it brings up the set tab right here. You're just going to scroll down. Oh no, no. I'm sorry. I forgot to pull a step. You're going to select the bones. You're going to go into pose mode. Then you're going to press the N key and bring up this tab right here. And you're going to scroll down until you see this box right here. It says rig control. And I'm going to make it bigger so you can see. And it says rotation limits. And you're going to check the all bones box. And then check the box that says disable rotation limits. Then we're going to go over here back into object mode. And then we're going to select the Avastar tab. And we're going to switch it back to pose mode. Now that we have that selected, we're going to go back to our original animation bones and we're going to go back into the animation tab which was moved, it used to be up here but now it's right here. I'm going to scroll down and then we're going to transfer the animation. Give it a second and then we're going to go a frame and you see that I'm on the ground. And then when we go here, you'll see that I'm on the ground. Wait a minute. I'm going to press. Whoa. That does not look good. Okay. Wait. Obviously, Zero has done something wrong. So let's go back one more time and see where I messed up at. All right. So let's select this and maybe go on to. Did I? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And then. Peter Fly. Um, let's see. Hmm. You know, it's like one of these times where I really wish I was a guy. That way I have... Uh, let's check that limit box off. You know, that way I have the mustache to stroke while I think, hmm, where did I go wrong? I'm envious of you men and your mustaches. Thinking hard with style. Alright, so let me try this one more time. 
and I write this in the net, mm -hmm. and then I transfer my emotion. There we go. I guess I just had to have it active or showing when it did it. So now you see I'm on the ground posed all lovingly for your enjoyment. <laughs> Alright, so now that we have this, I guess I say if it didn't work, go back and try it again. And I'm going to select my items, as you see, since they've raised their hair. I'm going to put the troublesome hair on, which seems to work out great. Everything's aligning. Oh, wait, my earrings are still up there. I guess I didn't rig those. Uh, so let's go back to the T-Pose. And, um, hmm, where is it? There they are. Put this here with my hair out of the way. I'm just going to grab these real quick and go into weight paint mode. Uh, tools, turn it up to 100. Go into Avastar mode and switch it back to uh, skin. Whoa, that's weird. Alright, so star. Uh, no, that's not. It's the. This is it. So this. Skin real quick. <sighs> Wait, paint mode. I'm sorry, I seem to have broken my system. Alright, so I'm going to select the earrings. Go on to weight paint mode. I'm going to select that and make it red. Pretty sure I selected the right thing. Uh, I broke it. Let me go back. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. Forgive me. Alright, alright, alright. For real this time. So I'm going to go to object mode. Yeah, uh -huh. So like this. Uh -huh. But why is it doing that, I wonder? No, let's just... Nope. Give me a second, let me figure this out. Okay, so I couldn't quite figure out what was going on, but I'm actually glad that it happened because um, I think rigging the earrings to her head would have been a big mistake because if I would have rigged them to her head, then both of the earrings would have been like this on her, the side of her face. And I think that I, that would have been really bad and I had trying to fix that later. So I'm derigged her, well not derigged, I separated her earrings and I'm just going to add them on there like uh, like yeah, I'm about to do right now. So I'm just going to select her earrings and press G. I think I'll leave a piece up there. Is that all of it? No. Okay, hang on. I think I lost a piece of earring. And I'm going to join Oh, no, that's not it. It was not in there. Alright, so I'm just going to grab her earring here. This one. <clears throat> this earring. Oh, I think I may have just joined them back together. I am a mess in this tutorial today. I am so sorry. The next one will be much better, I promise. So I'm just going to grab my earring and put it onto the ear like so. course I'm like way off cuz yeah put it there don't worry you can always adjust this in the world I guess there you go right on my ear and then I'm going to grab this one and press this shoot, shoot. and we're gonna put that on right here and you see what I mean? Why I wanted to make it look a little more natural than them just being off to the side. 
So let's do that same thing. So I guess that'll be my advice. Don't rig earrings. And then we can rotate it a little more. Oops. I think I might have transform a geometry to 3D cursor. There we go. That's an earring. And I can take the time to fix my boxing gloves because they actually are broken and we're all. Uh, if you go into edit mode, your stuff snaps back into the T-pose. So, um, hmm, I guess I would go into scope mode, maybe? Oh, oh well. Let me unlink those two then. Okay, I'm just going to do the same thing over here. Uh, P, this part. Uh, scope mode. There we go. You can actually do more stuff to it when it's like this. You can add all your fancy baking materials and make it look a little more realistic and clean up some stuff <laughs> more than I did. So there we have our avatar and in her pose with her hair. And now that everything is selected, we're going to deselect that link with the oops, the bones, and we're just going to press A. <clears throat> I guess object mode first, then A, and grab everything that's here. And see, is the hair on its own material? Yeah. So don't want to touch any of this. So grab everything, press A, and then we're going to export, file export as a regular Collada Day default. And we're going to select as a Sim Static, Second Life, Open Sim Static, and I'm going to click this Include Material Textures box. We're going to go to our action figure folder, and I'm just going to export it. Alright, so that is how we make our action figure. We're going to go and see if it came out right in the world. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll meet you in the world. Okay, so we're back here on Second Life and the beta grid as always because <laughs> look at that high linden count. You know I'm poor. <laughs> okay, so um, we're on the beta grid and we're going to import our mesh statue. So we're just going to go file, upload mesh, and select the untitled one because I didn't feel like naming it. Um, wait for it to load up in world and you see it is our stuff. We can push the textures and we'll be able to see if the textures load it properly. Um, like always, take your low zero and your lowest zero, and then you're gonna go to the upload thing. And because it's not a rigged mesh thing, they will, of course, these boxes won't be here, so you're just gonna check that include texture box, and then we're gonna press calculate and generate weights. We'll wait for it wait for it and this thing is 12 landing pet so it usually goes down once you attach it to like a prim or something like a stand for some reason but um 12 isn't so bad and when you make it smaller it tends to go down a little more if you think that's still too much you can try decimating some more unimportant objects like uh i would have decimated her boxing gloves or maybe the bikini a little bit more to get a more reduced landing pack but for me 12 isn't that bad for something like this so what we're going to do now is just res it onto the ground let me see if I have any eye textures oh, well that will be there because it's called eyeball but <laughs> eye and textures Yeesh, this is when I did other people's stuff hair and maybe I can steal somebody's eyes I wonder what action figure that one was oh this I know who that is so one person who wears that the cerulean crush <laughs> as I called her 
shoot, 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 shoot. Somebody has an eyeball. Come on, give me an eyeball. Oh, well, no eyeballs. Or will there possibly be one in here? Alright, I'm wasting time scanning for eyeballs when there is no ball, um, eyeball to be found. Alright, so no eyeball for zero. That's cool. So we're going to wait for this jumble of triangles to load. And when you do, you'll see I have a pretty me in here with no eyes because I forgot to grab that texture. Wait. There are usually eyes in the default second life. Oh, wait, there's an eyeball. Alright, so I'm going to zoom in to your face real quick. I'm going to hit edit and select texture. And I'm going to put an eye here. An eye here. And one in there. So yeah, I have eyes and everybody's eyelashes are usually black or... You can just make those transparent. There we go. <laughs> and if your eyes were in a weird position in the world, you can just, you know, select them right here. And then you can rotate them to make them go wherever you wanted them to go. This is a bad example because that eye is so dark, you can't really tell. But then again, meh, who really cares? Alright, so, Avatar is in world. But as you can see, she's Avatar sized. We want to make it small so we can put this on the shelf. Unless, you know, you have a giant shelf that can support an avatar this big. If you try to select it and try to shrink it down, most cases it won't go. It only gets bigger, which would be pretty cool to see. It's a giant zero statue <laughs> sitting somewhere. But no, no, tiny is what we're going for. So we're going to have to put in a resize script. And I have this really nice one that I like to use. It's a uh, resize. And I'm going to find the uh, object, just, no, the scripts. And it's called TC Link Set Resizer. And that is my favorite resize script. I'll put it in the kit when I put the care package in it so you can grab it off of there. So I'm just going to grab this and put it in here. And then we're just going to resize it down until it gets to however small you want it. So we can make it really small. Actually, I'm going to restore it real quick and make dupes. So I'm just going to hold down shift and then select over. Oh, that's how you do it. And um, what's that damn? Oh, it is shift, wasn't it? There you go. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> I often get, you know, you use Blender so often. You're going control D or shift D We're trying to make it come. Anyway, okay. So um, this is the original one, so this is avatar size, so we can use it as a scale for how tiny we're going to make it. So I'm going to make this one a lot smaller than that. There we go. And then we have a tiny, like I guess, Barbie size. And then we can actually shift D it again. And make it even smaller than that. One thing you have to keep in mind, and I think I have my camera disabled camera constraint, there we go, is that the body may shrink wonderfully, but the eyes never will. So you have to keep in mind about that and select the eyes and push them back into the head or else they'll stay bugged out like that and that's no good. So select both the eyes. And then we just push them back into the head. So that they make sense. <laughs> you may have to scroll along the textures to get them to fit the look right. But always keep in mind that the body can shrink down to a nickel. But the eyes will always bulge out. So make sure you push your eyeballs back in there. So yeah, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Oh, and you're going to want to turn on Fulbright because that gives it that no shading so no ugly shadow things so I like to make my stuff full bright and it kind of makes it pop a little more so yeah I like these statues 
and I always have fun making it. I just never have time to make as many as I promised to make. So maybe if the people who order action figures to me see this, they might get their action figures faster if they do it themselves. Also, it would be great for role playing, especially if you're a Naga. Oh no, Nagas don't turn people to stone. Gorgons turn people to stone. Or you can just have somebody go like, frozen in, in the action pose and you can have a stone statue of that for role play. Or um, statues, if you want to be one of those people who have statues of yourself, because, you know, why not? What's a castle without a statue of the owner? <laughs> or what I've seen my friends do is to use these as fountains. So if you have a pose where you're holding a bucket or peeing, as that one was... You can turn those into statues and stuff as well. The possibilities are endless. Now, at the beginning of this tutorial, I said I will show you how to do it if you had a, um, a mesh body instead of a um, second life body. Hang on one second. This bug has been fighting me this whole tutorial. Die, bug. Okay. Sorry. Um, if you have a mesh body, the process is a little bit different. For the most part, it's the same, but you are going to need a the dev kit for your body. If you have a Matria body, see, I'm saying it right now. <laughs> if you have a Matria body, then you can use the G0 kit that we provided in that Matria tutorial. Uh, any other body, I don't have the kit for, so I can't really tell you how that will work. Because some creators um, will give you the kit. But then the UV maps are all wrong. So that could be problematic. And like I know the kimono body is like that. But I'm pretty sure there's a rigged kimono body somewhere you can use. Wink. <laughs> um, same thing for furry bodies. As long as the dev kit they provide for you allows you to um, have the UV maps and it's rigged with an Alvastar thing, that makes it a lot easier. If it's an Alvastar dev kit, then you can do that. Otherwise, um, I don't really know what to tell you. Uh, for the most part, if your dev kit, you can't get the dev kit, you would just extract your shape like we did with this, and then use the reference picture to pull and shape your avatar out so it matches what you have. And that's what I used to do. Uh, with my wrestler friends was they all have mesh bodies and back in the day you couldn't just extract it out because um, we didn't have meshes so I would have to use their default second life shape and then try to artistically uh, shape their body using sculpt tools and a good 86% of the time they were like ew that looks nothing like me the face is there but the body yeah so yeah, um, if you have the Matria body, you're in luck because we have that already on YouTube. So you can just go over there and grab that. Uh, any other kits, um, you're kind of on your own. That's the only solution I can think of. So yeah, did you guys like it? Did you enjoy it? Did it help you out? Or are you going to make stuff? I hope you show it to me. We actually are going to start recreating our Facebook page. So I say after this video go look up the mighty ginkgo on Facebook and then you can share what you've learned from our videos because I will really love to see it uh, what you guys made or if I really did make a difference in helping you guys do anything um, our next video should be coming right up soon so if you have any suggestions of what you want to learn please feel free to put it in the comments and if I can do it I'll show you how it's done so that's it for this tutorial. This has been 0 to 10, and I look forward to teaching you something again tomorrow. Bye!